on to Tahoe. We're going to start out in Tahoe with wellness, and then we're going to go into bikini. So in wellness, we saw Barbara take this, and I believe I had her as my winner for wellness, didn't I? No, no, no. Actually, I did not. I had Barbara in second, and I had Renee Harshi in first. Renee Harshi ended up in sixth. Renee didn't even look like herself on stage, to be honest with you. Like when she went on stage again, she changed out her suit. This is another one that she went from a blue suit, which I thought was beautiful on her, and she ended up going into, into a red suit. And I don't think the red suit flattered her as much as that blue one did. The blue one just popped off of her so much better than this red. I felt like with the red, she just kind of faded into the background. There was just something off about that color. There was something off about her hair. It just wasn't the same look that she's had before, and I liked her previous looks better on her. She was also very soft. Um, this was the softest that I've seen her come in. So I wasn't super impressed with her. I was kind of surprised, to be honest with you. I thought she was gonna look a lot better than she did. Um, and she was appropriately placed in that sixth place position for her. Um, but I did initially, going into the show, I did initially have her as my, as my potential winner. Um, then Amanda, which was one that Devin mentioned. Amanda's one that I actually wasn't really a huge fan of her look. Um, she ended up in fifth. Um, which again, I think was appropriately placed for her. Um, she's, she's, she's got that Brazilian look going on. Like she's got different shoes. She's got, you know, a different kind of suit than most of the girls. And to me, it's just, it's just distracting to me, to be honest with you, that sort that stuff is just distracting. So, um, I think that the fifth place position for her was, was appropriate. Um, I'm trying to look at her posing. I wasn't a fan of her posing either. Um, let me see. I do think this was a better look on her than I've seen at like, she did Pittsburgh. I was not a fan of her look at Pittsburgh. This is this is actually a better look on her than she had in Pittsburgh, so I'll give her that. She definitely improved from that. Um, but if I'm looking at her from the back, she's just a little, she's just a little meh. She's just, she's just not like, she's not doing it for me. You know what I mean? There's nothing, there's nothing like glaringly wrong. Like I think she's in shape. Um, I think it's, I think everything that she's got going on is, is fine. I just, I'm not a fan of her posing and presentation aspects, to be perfectly honest with you. I think if she had a different suit, different shoes, different posing, I think I might like her a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, I just be honest. I think what she's doing is a little bit distracting to me. Um, so that's where I see the issue with her, but she still plays fifth. So it's not like she, she did bad or anything like that. I just like to see somebody kind of take her over as far as her um, her presentation aspects and kind of give her a whole makeover. I think that would really help her. Um, then going into Crystal Hayes. Now, Crystal Hayes is gorgeous. Um, as soon as she walked on stage, I was like, oh, she's pretty. <laughs> You know, so like she was just a standout um, immediately. She was a standout, beautiful presence, beautiful look. The suit and everything was gorgeous on her. Um, the blue on her skin tone was beautiful. Um, you know, she's one of the taller competitors, so it's harder for her to kind of match up when it comes to size. We got a lot of short girls, that kind of thing, but really pretty front pose. Um, I love that kind of it's a, I, I think of it as kind of almost like an Instagram pose for the front pose and it's a little bit um, it's a little bit cock, cocked off to the side for wellness and I really like it I think it's really pretty um, Barbara does it too I like that front pose a lot um, it's different but it's it's very flattering I like it a lot um, let me look at her back pose here she just needs to be tighter from the back and honestly I think a lot of that can be fixed if she just stood up she's really bent over in her back pose. And I think if she just stood up a little taller, I think a lot of that could be fixed right there. And that would be why she looks soft and she looks like she's she's lacking in the glutes, the hamstring tie-ins, and she's just bent over too much. So if somebody could come in and just tell her to stand up, I think she'd be doing even better. But she took fourth, so that's good. She got some, some points, but she just needs to stand up. Just stand up, that's all. Um, but yeah, gorgeous look, though. Um, and then we're going to go to Mal. So Mallory Myers, uh, she was fourth in Tampa. So she moved up here. Let me pull up a couple of her pictures and see what we're looking at here with Mallory. Um, again, she was just a little soft. Like a lot, most of these girls at this show were just a little bit soft, a little bit soft, a little bit soft. I think the top four, when I was watching them compare a lot, I think um, Barbara was the clear winner. And then the top four were very, very tight. Um, so looking at Mallory, she's just a little bit soft. She, that makes her look a little thick through the waistline because she's a little bit soft. Um, 
Same thing from the back, from the back. She's just a little bit soft and she's another one. If she just stood up a little bit, she would present herself a whole lot better in that back pose. Um, she just, when you bend over so much, it actually reduces the detail in your back pose. It reduces the detail in your, in your hamstrings and your glutes. Um, it flattens everything out. So that's one of the reasons why they don't want you to do that in bikini because in bikini you want to have those nice round full bubbly glutes. Um, you want that here too. You want that here in wellness. Um, this has become kind of a trend a little bit with girls bending over quite a bit more in wellness, thinking that's going to make their legs pop a little bit more. Uh, it does, but again, it takes away that detail. It takes away the back. Uh, so if she could just stand up a little bit, I think that would really help her in her back pose. Um, and then going into Tatiani. Tati, Tati, Tatiani, Tatiani. I hope it's spelled that, pronounced that right. Um, she was the tightest one of this top four, other than Barbara. Um, actually, probably even more so than Barbara, to be honest with you. Um, let me look at a couple of her poses. Yeah, and because she was conditioned enough through the waistline, her waistline came in nice and tight again. She's a, she's a shorter one, so you have to come in a little tighter when you're short in order to get the waistline to come in. Um, really full quads, uh, really full lower half. Um, could have been a little bit tighter through the quads. <clears throat> Let me take a look at her back pose. Um, there she is. Back pose is okay, but again, needs to be tighter. Needs to be tighter through the back pose for sure. If she can tighten up through the glutes and the hamstrings there, that would have been a lot better. She's tight on the upper half. The lower half is, is where she, she needs to tighten up a little bit. She's holding a little bit of water there. Um, but overall, I think she was the best choice for second place. And again, I think it was very, very close between those two through four. Um, they moved them around a lot during prejudging. I noticed that uh, because I don't think anybody had the complete package other than, other than Barbara. I think Barbara had the complete package and it was a clear winner. Um, she still, let's see, in order to go to, to be competitive at the Olympia, she's going to need to add a little bit of size. Um, let me see. Yeah, she's just going to have to fill out specifically her legs. Um, she's going to have to fill out her legs a little bit for the Olympia. But this was a good look for her. I mentioned in, ta or in Tampa, she was really covered in glaze, and that made her look a lot softer than she actually was. So here she got that under control. She looks a lot better when it comes to that aspect of it, her conditioning aspect of it. For Olympia, she's going to need to be a little bit more conditioned, and she's going to need to fill her legs out a little bit more too specifically from the back. Um, she's another one that does the, um, like the modified front pose that I really like. And it works really, really well. It works really well on girls that have a small waistline from the front. Like when they stand straight onto you, if you have a small waistline that V's in into the center, it looks really, really good on girls like that. And that's what she has. Um, so this is a very flattering front pose for her. Um, if you have a more blocky uh, midsection, this wouldn't look good on you as a wellness competitor. But for her, it's really, really, it's really, really pretty on her. And she's just overall a really pretty girl. Like I mentioned in Tampa, she's just extremely stunning. It's hard to not look at her. Um, she's just, she's just a beautiful girl. So in my opinion, um, she won this hand, hands down. And I think based on how I, I was watching them move the girls around and things like that, I think that. I mean, across the board, I think she was the winner um, pretty clearly. So she did qualify for the Olympia. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, so did Tati, Tatiani, Tatiani. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong, Tatiani. <laughs> so they both did qualify for the Olympia. Um, yeah, she is beautiful. She's beautiful, Karen. Um, okay, so we're going to move over to Bikini which is the one that everybody was talking about because this was epic. This was an epic storyline and we'll get to that, but we're going to start with fifth place and work our way up. <laughs> so very last thing that we'll talk about is the storyline here. So um, fifth place was Brina. So Brina did move up this week. Um, her last show was Chicago where she ended up in first call out, but she ended up out of the first call out, but she just wasn't tight enough. So she did get tight enough here. She's definitely tightened up, which looks good. But the thing she has to be careful about is that she's very muscular. She is probably the most muscular girl on this stage in bikini. So when that's the case, um, she has a tendency to stick out because she's so muscular. Um, 
Brina had so much sass. She did. Brina's posing was great as far as her presentation and stuff like that was concerned. I spoke to her a little bit during the show and after about a few presentation tweaks. She is doing Nashville. Um, we're going to change a few things on her for Nashville. I gave her a few of my two cents. You know, she asked me for some feedback, that kind of thing. So we're going to we're gonna adjust a few things with her back pose, adjust a few things with her makeup, that kind of thing. Um, her suit and everything as well. Um, I believe she was given feedback that she just needs to tone it down. Um, or go up to wellness, one of the two. Um, which, to be honest with you, I don't think going to wellness for her would be a bad idea. I think if she wanted to put a good off season in and go to wellness, I think she could do it real easy. Uh, she's got the genetic frame for it, uh, and I think if she just put the put the effort behind it in the in the in the gym, I th I think she could do it. I think she'd do it very very well, and I think she could I think she could qualify for the Olympian in wellness. To be perfectly honest with you, she would just need to grow a little bit, just a little bit. She's already got the muscle; she just got to fill it out, you know. So um, overall, again, she, her present her presentation, her present her presence on stage and everything is killer. Like you can't not watch watch her. Um, even, I think even Tarek said it at one time, wow, Brina or something like that. When she was, when she was, it was either Tarek or it was the MC. One of them said something about that when she was on stage. She just has that wow factor when she's on stage. You can't stop watching her, right? Brina mentioned bringing down her glutes in her IG. She's so, she's so beautiful. Yeah, she did. So, you know, and she is, she's, and that was the first thing that I said to her when she asked me for my feedback was as soon as I saw her on stage and she turned to the back is like, wow, that's, that's a little much. Like, I wish I had those glutes, you know what I mean? But they are, they're big, they're overpowering. So she needs to figure out a way to kind of run them down. Um, and also pose them a little bit differently too. I gave her a few tips as far as posing is concerned. So hopefully, uh, this next show in Nashville should be able to, to kind of, um, bring them down just a little bit. And the one thing that I noticed with her back pose is that the way she was posing made her glutes look square. So she needs to kind of just relax a little bit in that back pose and let those glutes fill out and not look square like that, right? Um, yeah, she was on fire. She sure was. So, and I wanted to mention this too because I mentioned it on my IG stories. My favorite part of the whole pre-judging for this show was they were bringing the girls back for confirmation rounds. They brought back the top four. Right, so they were comparing um, Ashley and Aaron, and they had them go off to the side. So um, Ivana and Kaylee were left on stage, and then they asked uh, Brina to come back down and join the lineup. Well, there was a big open space in the middle of the stage, so you know the two girls are standing there on either side of the box, and Brina was like, "Screw this!" and she walked right into the middle of the stage into that center box. It was like, "I'm here." <laughs> I was laughing so hard. And even Tarek, head judge, was like, yeah, Brina, take that middle spot. <laughs> it's like, it was great. It was so good. Um, so yeah, it was, it, that's the kind of confidence that you want to have when you're on stage. And she absolutely has that. You can't, I mean, you can't deny the fact that she owns that freaking stage. So um, we're, again, going to make a few tweaks going into the next show. Um, hopefully bring a little bit better balance, that kind of thing, and uh, and go from there. But this was, this was an improved package. You know, it's just about continuing to get better from here. Um, but yeah, we always tell you guys to go straight towards that middle box and she did. She went straight towards that middle box. I loved it. It was great. Um, so we're going to go to Kaylee next. Suited up in fourth. Um, and Kaylee is, this is probably the best seen Kaylee look. Um, she was the tallest competitor up there other than Aaron. She was a little bit taller than Aaron. Um, so I'm guessing she's what, like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, something like that. Um, very well balanced. I've given her critiques before about being a little soft with the glutes. She didn't have that problem here. Um, she was definitely well balanced with her conditioning and very good X frame from top to bottom. Um, makeup looked good. Again, there's just something about her makeup whenever she's on stage. I'd like to see more pop. I don't know what it is that's missing. I don't know if it's lip color or what it is, but there's just something about her makeup. I want to see a little bit more pop to her. I think it might be her lips. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'll know it when I see it right, <laughs> you know? Um, and then when we turn her to the back, um, she is nice and tight through the back. Um, those are not full on posed. Let me get a full posed picture. Um, yeah, I mean, this is probably the best that I've seen. I've seen her from the back as well. And what she's going to probably need to do uh, is just just grow a little bit more glutes, a little bit more pop to the outer part of her glute and top and everything like that. Like we were talking about uh, with Rihanna, kind of the same thing here. She needs to add a little bit more density there so they so pop a little bit more. Um, oh, my gosh. If you're, if you're advising Brina, then I can't wait to see her next presentation. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm one of those people, a lot of these girls do reach out to me and ask me for help after um, after the shows and things like that. 
<clears throat> and I'm more than willing to help. You know, I'm more than willing to help and give my two cents. So, um, yeah, I just kept thinking she needs a cutie cosmetics lip color. I know, right? Yeah, that, that there's something. I think it's her lips. I think she needs some pop to her lips is what it is. I think that's what it is. But anyway, regardless, this was this was the best I've seen her look. Um, and she's just going to need to add some some size and some pop to her glutes, really, um, which just a little bit, just just enough to have some uh, density to re be able to compete with, you know, Ashley, uh, the Ashleys of the world. You know what I mean? Um, so that was Kaylee. And then we're going to go to Ivana. So Ivana, again, she was one that was like Ashley that did both shows this weekend. So she did, um, she did both uh, Texas and Tahoe. Um, what lip color do you recommend for wearing for a red suit? Depends on the girl. It depends on the girl. Um, yes, it's the lips. It's the lips. Yes. So Ivana, I think this was actually a better look for her at this particular show. She, she got a little bit thin through that waistline just a touch, but not too, too much yet. Um, when you start to see rib cage, that's when the girls are getting a little bit too thin, a little bit too gaunt through there. We're starting to see that just a touch here. Not bad though. This is what she needs to do. Like right here is perfect. If she goes any further than that, then she's going to go too far. This was good. Um, this was, this was a, an improved look even from Texas. Um, let me look at her back shot here. Let's see where is she at. There she is. So yeah, so this back shot, she filled out from Texas, right? So I mentioned in Texas, she didn't have that pop here. She did here. She did here. She had good pop. I mean, it was pretty clear to me what uh, position they were each in. Uh, when I was watching pre-judging and finals, it was pretty clear to me that she was going to be in the third place position, that Kaylee was going to be in fourth, um, just based on the pop of the glutes, just based on the pop of the glutes, um, because they both have very, really well-balanced X-frames from the front. Uh, she had she had a better pop to her glutes. That's why she ended up in third here. Um, so, yeah, again, that's why I think her, her points aren't updated, because she should have more than 10 points at this point. She should definitely have more than 10 points at this point. So I think that's why she was moved up the standings. They just didn't actually update her actual points on there. So she's probably right. She's probably right in that fourth place position there. They just didn't update her points. Um, where are we at? Hold on. That's the wrong one. Oh, there we are. Okay. So now we're going to the top two. Okay. So this is where the rubber hit, met the road here, guys. So we're going to talk talk about Ashley first, then we're going to talk about Aaron, who did win it, um, and why this is so important, and why I had Aaron winning, and all of those kinds of things. So, um, Ashley came to the show, and it's not easy to see this in the photos, but I did notice it on the live stream. She had some distension in her lower abs. Um, now, that could have been from, you know, doing two shows back to back, or something along that line, but I've seen that happen with her before, where she just doesn't keep her abs quite tight enough. Um, so that's what I saw there. And I also saw her shoulders being really like, they looked small to me and they looked soft. She looked soft from the front. Um, that to me says she's tired, which is probably the case. I mean, she competes a lot. Plus she competed twice in, in 48 hours. You know what I mean? So that's where I saw she just, again, even in Texas, I had uh, Rihanna winning from the front. So where Ashley needs to be careful is that when she gets tired, when her body gets tired, when she gets tired, her waistline is a problem. So I saw that on the live feed. Again, when you look at the photos, you don't really see it much in the photos. I'm looking at it now to see if I can find anything that really indicates that, but not really. I did see it though. I did. Yeah. Well, yeah. When she's going through her transitions, you can see it's coming out a little bit. Um, just through some of her transition poses. You can see it coming out a little bit. You can see it's just a little bit watery. That's just a little bit of stress right there. That's a little bit of her being tired right there. So that's what I saw with her. Um, now, when you turn her to the back, let's see. Um, again, she's tilted off to the side in her back pose, which is a thing. It's a thing. She's really tilted and she lost some of that pop. Again, to me, this show looks like she's tired versus Texas. Texas, she looked, she looked like she was fresh. This show, she looks tired, right? Um, from the back, I just don't see that same pop in the outer part of her glutes that she had when she was in Texas. Of course, she still looks phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. She still looks great. But when you're looking at the two shows back to back between the, between the two days, she lost a little bit here. She lost a little bit here. Um, so you bring in an Ashley that's not quite, not quite on. She's, she's, she's off by a little bit. And that opens up the door for somebody else, which was Aaron Stern. 
This was probably the best I've seen Aaron look. Now, for a few things I really wanna give Aaron credit for. One, one of the things, as you guys know, I mean, she's transitioned over from figure into bikini, right? So this has been a process for her, and I've given her a lot of critiques over the last two years since she's been back in the pro league as a bikini competitor. And when she first started in bikini, she was a hot mess. <laughs> I mean, her presentation was horrible. Um, her suit, her makeup, her hair, all of that stuff did not do her any favors. Um, but over the course of the last two years, she has taken her feedback and she's improved and improved and improved and improved. I was surprised the judges changed scores. That happens all the time. It happens all the time. Prejudging and finals are two different shows. You have to come back good or better at finals. It's happened so many times. Jasmine, Jasmine can tell you this from personal, personal experience. There has been plenty of shows where she's been winning at prejudging and lost at finals because she came into finals too soft. Talk to her. It's happened. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. I love when they judge both shows. Tarek and Tamer from Muscle Contest always judge both. They always judge prejudging and finals. Becky Clawson judges prejudging and finals a lot too. You have to come back to the finals looking great especially if it's like a one point decision, which is what's been happening, what happened to Jasmine quite a few times. There were quite a few times where she'd be winning by like one point at prejudging. And then they're like, it's so close. There was a show specifically, I can remember, Sandy was head judge. She was winning at prejudging because she was a little bit, she was a little bit on the soft side. Camille Perriott was a little bit on the hard side. So they went for Jasmine because Jasmine was a little bit closer on the softer side. They didn't want to go too hard. Then at finals, Jasmine came back softer and that put Camille over the edge and Camille won it and Jasmine came in second. So it happens a lot. Um, it, it seemed according to Ashley's coach that it almost never happens. Nope, it happens all the time. It happens all the time, all the time, all the time. Jen Ronziti and Jen Dory, perfect example from Tampa last year. There was a one point difference at, after prejudging. Jen Ronziti was winning after prejudging. At finals, Jen Dory won. Happens all the time. All the time. Me and Aaron did our bikini pro debuts in Tampa. I win in hot backwards bikini. I, that was, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> Sorry, Karen, that's a whole lot of typos right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, how, that was how Jen Dory won Tampa pro last year. That was how she won Tampa pro last year. So it happens a lot. It happens a lot. You have to come back to the show looking as good or, or better for finals, right? Um, the more you know, exactly, exactly. You can't just assume that the show is won or lost after prejudging. You can't ever do that. Can't ever do that, especially when it's a really close show. And it was only a one point difference. If you look at the scorecards, it was a one point difference between Ashley and Aaron at prejudging. So yeah, of course they're gonna judge you again when you come back to finals. If it's a one point difference, yeah, absolutely they're gonna judge you again. Um, amateur and pro level happens. Yeah, absolutely. It happens on the amateur level too. It happens at nationals. It happens all the time, you guys. If it's that close too, they're gonna rejudge. They're gonna rejudge um, plenty of times. Absolutely, plenty of times, sure does, sure does. You don't ever wanna just assume it's in the bag, ever, ever. But anyway, so let's get back to this. So this was the best I've seen Erin look and her presentation was flawless. It was flawless. I mean, her posing was flawless, her transitions were flawless. She did not make one error when it came to her poses. Ashley's posing has been getting better throughout the year, but where Ashley suffers in her posing is in her transitions and in her walk. She lets things go during her transitions and during her walk. So as I said before, when you've got an Ashley that's not 100% and you've got an Erin who is on, 100% on, and her presentation is flawless, that's where you get Erin winning. That's where you get Erin winning. Um, Yes, Erin has come a long way, so proud. She sure has, and that's what I love seeing about this too, because like I said, when she started in bikini, she was a hot mess. She, I mean, she was a hot mess. I mean, I, I saw a lot of her like in-person shows. <laughs> she was a hot mess. So seeing her come out and own the stage that she did, like she did at this Tahoe show, I was like, that's, I mean, that's what Olymp Olympia champion does. 
you know that's what they do i love seeing her just take that feedback and improve and improve and improve and improve and improve and here she is now you know when the two of them were up against each other oh and we haven't even talked about really about um her physique or anything like that but she's got an incredible physique we all know this i mean she was an olympia figure competitor champion twice so i mean she's got an incredible frame and she's really done a very, very good job of filling out those glutes and getting those glutes to pop. Um, her glutes looked phenomenal. That's where I've always kind of um, had a problem with her physique the last couple of years as she was trying to like fine tune herself, but her glutes looked amazing here. Amazing. Very well balanced, great 3D pop. I mean, all the way around, she had a fantastic package. Um, it was nice to see Aaron get the win. Good for her. Absolutely. And you know, that was the thing that they were hyping this thing up about. You know, you had the top, those top two between the two of them, they have five Olympia titles, you know, Ashley has three and Aaron has two, right? So between the two of them, they have five Olympia titles together. This is the first time ever in the history of the sport that you've got two previous Olympia winners, one from a different category competing against another one in a pro show the win and you have a figure olympia champion that just beat a previous bikini olympia champion that's crazy you guys that's crazy and that's huge kudos to aaron right there huge for her to be able to go from one division to the other and actually excel and now she's going to the olympia and guess what the fact that she just beat um ashley on this show that gives aaron the opportunity to move up into the top 10 and the top five at the olympia Ashley was seventh, seventh. Yeah, she was seventh. She was seventh at last year's Olympia. Aaron now has the opportunity. Ashley just opened that door. Aaron has the opportunity to be up in the top five this year. Wouldn't that be some crazy shit? I'm just saying this just made the Olympia so much more interesting. Like I can't wait to see what happens, right? And we've still got a couple of months. I don't know if either one of these girls are going to compete again. I know Ashley's doing the Arnold. I don't know if Aaron's going to com compete again or not or not. If I was Aaron, I would get off stage and I would get on stage for the Olympia. That's what I would do. I wouldn't I wouldn't compete again. This was a great way to like stamp her ticket and let's get off stage and go prepare for this this show. You know what I mean? Uh, um, but this was this made this is making the Olympia very interesting. Very interesting. Not to mention Aaron is a master's competitor, so freaking inspirational. Yes, Aaron is 41 years old. So Aaron was the one that I followed when I first started competing. Um, I started by just following competitors and stuff like that on uh, bodybuilding.com. And I followed her transformation journey and her workouts and stuff on bodybuilding.com. She is the reason I started. Um, she was on my vision board. She was the reason. She was the, she was the look I wanted. So it's really awesome to see this happen. It really, really is. Um, I love Erin. So humble. And she just puts her head down and works. Amazing athlete. Absolutely. That's the other thing, too. She's not, she's not super outgoing. She's very shy. So, um, you know, you have to go talk to her to get her to talk to you. You know what I mean? But once you do, she is. She's incredibly humble. Um, you know, she'll, she, she's very down to earth once you actually sit and talk to her and everything like that. So you, you guys, if you ever get starstruck by her or something at a show, just go say hi. And she'll make you feel like... You you're her best friend. She's just, she's an awesome ambassador for the sport. She's an awesome person all the way around. So this was really, this was really cool to see. This was really, really cool to see. So, um, let's see. I feel like Aaron and Laura Lee and Jen would compare well, but Ashley would compare better to DeRaja and Issa. Eh, maybe, maybe. Um, good point. Also missing three top 10 girls from last year. Yeah. Well, that's, oh, of course. Yeah. So going into the Olympia, the, the top five is wide open. The top five is wide open going to the Olympia. And people have been asking me, um, who I, who I have predicted to win this year. And I have absolutely no idea. None. Zero. I'll know a little bit better once we've done the Arnold. Once we get through the Arnold next month, then we'll have a little bit better of an idea of maybe how these placings will will stack out. But, you know, we've got a few more weeks of qualifications left. Just a couple more. And things can really flip-flop really, really fast. Um, because even in Tampa, even though Jen Dory took third and she wasn't 100%, I feel like with Jen Dory being 100%, she's a massive threat for the Olympia title. So, you know, I, I'm not willing to put any anybody out right now. I'm not willing to put anybody out right now. Um, how tall is Laura Lee? 5'8". Um, she was right behind me in Tampa, and I asked her if she had seen 
Aaron, and she is so cool with that fumble. That's too funny. That's something you would do, Karen. Um, yeah, so true. The sweetest person, Aaron. She talked with me for a long time at a show recently, like asked me questions about my journey. I mean, I was so appreciative of Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. And what's something uh, that a lot of you guys probably don't know about her too is that she um, she's a track athlete, and she just missed the Olympics. She did the Olympic trials, I think, twice. I think twice is what she did it for, for high jump. And she just barely missed qualifying for the Olympics. So she's like a legit athlete. Legit, legit. <laughs> she's not just a figure or bikini athlete. She's a legit athlete, like almost Olympics level athlete. So, um, so yeah, pretty cool person to um, get to know her story and everything. And like I said, with her winning this show, I mean, it really makes for an interesting Olympia coming up. Very interesting Olympia coming up. So, um, I personally had her winning at, at pre-judging and at finals. In my opinion, I thought the presentation aspect of it alone pushed her up and over the edge. Um, her posing, her walk, her confidence, everything was there. It was there. Um, plus the body too. And like I said, when I looked at her versus Ashley, Ashley just looked a little tired in comparison to what she has before. So, um, so yeah, I just think, I think she won it hands down. In my opinion, she won it hands down. So, and, and I, I couldn't be happier. I think it's going to, again, I think it's going to make for a very fun Olympia. It's not going to be boring. We don't know who the top five is going to be this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> and with that, that's it. That's our review for this week. So any questions about anything that, that happened, I'll leave it open for another couple of minutes and then we'll shut it down because again, we're getting to an hour again. Um, um, seeing a trend with track athletes, Aaron and Ashley. Tr yeah, anybody that's been an athlete uh, previously in their life tends to do very well when they get to competing because they already have the uh, muscle built up. They have the, they have the structure, they have the muscle built up. So there are a lot of people that are in the IPB now that were serious athletes in, you know, high school, college, that kind of thing too. I'm excited that there's more tall bikini was doing well in 5'8 and it gives me hope. Oh yeah, the tall girls are doing very well. Like that's the one thing over the last few years is, um, you know, height used to be a thing. Like you'll see a lot of girls that are 5'5, five five, that kind of thing, because that's just a, that's just the height that most girls are. But you see a lot of girls that are under that, like Ivana, Ivana's under that. Um, and she's been doing very well across the board at top fives every time she's in a show. And then you see girls that are 5'8", and that kind of thing too. Um, Janet, Janet's, they say she's 5'8", but I don't think she is. I think she's 5'7". <laughs> they say she's 5'8", but I think she's 5'7". Um, you know, Laura Lee's 5'8". Uh, Adela, 5'8". You know, so a lot of these girls are tall. Yeah. Me too, I'm 5'10". Yeah, I'm 5'9", so, you know, <laughs> I get it. Um... Yeah, and I think, and I think Aaron is 5'7". I think Aaron is 5'7". So she might be 5'8". I might be, I might be off by an inch. Um, they Raj is 5'2". Yep, there's a lot of girls that are short and a lot of girls that are tall that are doing well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good night, you guys.